and be like that for any other any other kind mm -hmm. of medical procedure. Here's the risks. For sure, you Explain yeah. what's going on. As far as I know, this is the only medical procedure where less information is considered a good thing. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go to Florine. Uh, hi, Florine. You're on the air with Marie Claire. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just saying that. Uh, uh, my mom had me early, like six months pregnant, and oh, wow. uh, I'm living today, and I'm mm -hmm. 78 years old, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to see how can mm -hmm. they say this to baby when, you know, until it's born, like at no. nine months, because yeah. I'm here to prove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you were and, like a, uh, what, like 25 mm -hmm. week, 25 weeks along, something like that, or yeah, wow. in northern wow. Manitoba in 1939. I, oh they my didn't goodness! Have no intravenous; it was eye droppers. To see. Yeah, exactly. With, you know, oh, and man. so it's proof. And you know, I did have a miscarriage, and mm. like you say, you go through the morning of losing this child, and you you don't forget about it. It's it's something mm -hmm. there that's always with you. Mm -hmm. So having a mis I mean, having a abortion would be even worse. Yeah, and now mm -hmm. some people believe that uh, you know uh, they might be saying, "Well, I'm not." for abortion so much, but there are some exceptions. You know, let's say if the, you know, the mom is very young or, you know, who's going to raise this child or maybe the child is going to be handicapped and so forth. What would you say to people like that, um, uh, Florine? Um, would you repeat that? I didn't quite... Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, are there exceptions? Yeah. Are there some cases where abortion is okay? You know, if, the, if you know, the child is going to have a difficult life, or if the mother's going to have trouble raising the child, do you think it's okay then, or is it always wrong? No, it's always wrong, but uh, one thing my husband and I decided when we got married, if it was threatening the mother, that then that would be a choice of, mm -hmm. you know. Right, uh, and, and, like, that's, and that's a good question, actually, Florine. Uh, I'll let uh, Marie Claire answer that. Uh, again, that's one of the arguments that comes up. And again, it's such a small percentage of the time. But if the, the mother's life is genuinely in danger, you know, what should the mm -hmm. mother and the doctor, you know, do? How do they handle that situation? Let's say it's a uh, tubal pregnancy, right, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or ectopic, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so once again, that is very, very rare. Um, doctors do... <laughs> from from my knowledge, doctors do tend to err on the side of caution in saying that their child could put the mother at risk. Mm -hmm. However, I know many, many children who've been born um, during who the doctor had suggested that the mother abort them, including my, my cousin. And my aunt is just so glad she, she didn't choose to end her mm -hmm. child's life. But there are, there are definitely situations in which there is no possibility for a, um, the survival of the child or the mother. Mm -hmm. And in that case... Um, we wouldn't necessarily call it an abortion because mm -hmm. abortion is a surgery with the intent of killing the right, child. Right, exactly. However, if you go, yeah, if you go in there and you remove the um, the baby from uh, the ectopic uh, tube with the intent of saving the mother's life, and you're not, uh, in, you're not, your your primary intention is not to kill the child. Mm -hmm. um, that that would be considered. Okay, because wouldn't, that, wouldn't be considered that, a, a yeah a, an abortion in that sense or the intentional taking mm -hmm, of a human yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, I, I tend to agree yeah. with that. So again, this is not about uh, you know um, we're going to make uh, you know mothers sacrifice their lives for their baby uh, in this case. In all likelihood, if that were the case, uh, you know uh, quite likely they would both die. You know, so yeah, uh, that's not yeah. a good solution. I mean, uh, especially if you already have children to take care of and so forth, right? So, uh, but. Excellent. Appreciate the call. Again, if you're just tuning in, I do want to encourage you to get involved with the uh, Campaign Life Coalition, um, you know, being a voice for the unborn. All right. So do check it out. CampaignLifeCoalition.com. The March for Life coming up on May 11th. And you can certainly be a part of that. Uh, love to see Parliament Hill just flooded with young people being a voice for the unborn. All right. Let's go to Margaret's call. Margaret, you're on the air with Marie Claire Bissonette. Hi. Hello. I have a question, sure. and that is, um, I'm pro-life, mm -hmm. but I agree with uh, birth control. Okay. And the question is, why are the two lumped together so that if you vote for one, you're voting for the other as well? Oh, okay. Well, well I mean, birth control is an interesting issue. It's almost a separate topic, but yet it does tie in here because some forms of birth control actually end up 
aborting the baby in the process. Other, you know, um, birth control methods, for example, a condom isn't going to kill a baby. So, uh, you know, I think we'd classify that as an acceptable um, form of birth control. Now, there's different theologies on that and so forth, but I won't get into that. But as far as a pro-life issue, that's not a problem, you know. But certain types of birth control methods actually do kill uh, the, the unborn fetus. That's my understanding. And maybe, Marie Claire, you can add some clarity to that. Mm -hmm. No, uh, for sure. Uh, the Plan B, uh, it's a pill that you take the morning after um, you have intercourse. And so uh, it, it kills the, the fetus or the, the zygote if a, a baby has already started to develop. Um, and I think uh, the two go together um, in, in some sense because uh, once birth control had started really taking off in the turn of the century and more advanced uh, methods of birth control had been figured out, people started having almost a contraceptive mentality, which led to a lot of casual sex. And of mm -hmm. course, birth control does fail in that instance. And so you end up pregnant, and, but you're still in the, in the mindset of, I don't want this child. So that kind of opened the gateway, you could say, mm -hmm. to um, an abortive mentality, which is uh, kill the child. Um, and so it, it really, uh, I'm not saying uh, contraception is uh, equatable to abortion. Of course it's not. Abortion is killing a child. Um, but it does kind of fall hand in hand historically of how, of uh, just a mentality of, of when and why to have sex. Mm -hmm. so. And in fact, I know there's a number of websites you can go to uh, if you'd like. Um that actually do uh, list the different forms of birth control, which ones um, are safe, they won't kill uh, an unborn child, and which ones do. So there is a difference that way. But interesting point Marie Claire brings up on, on birth control. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but uh, uh, it does, you know, there is a connection in that sense that uh, uh, birth control did certainly, I think, increase promiscuity. Uh, and again, and maybe the more likelihood of mm -hmm. people actually, you know, getting a, a, an abortion and so forth. Um, there is, of course, natural family planning, and that is simply, you know, uh, spacing uh, your babies, avoiding, um, you know, intercourse during certain uh, fertile times and so forth. And, uh, you know, that's maybe a little more uh, God's heart that way as well. But uh, any thoughts you have, Margaret? Well, I still think there should be a definition between uh, methods of killing a baby and a uh, birth control that has nothing to do with um, right with well, yeah. killing mm -hmm. yeah the i would baby agree i would agree that certainly uh, there are acceptable quote unquote uh, you know birth control methods that don't harm the child and i'm not going to you know deny somebody uh, you know the right to use that because it doesn't actually take a human life so margaret thank you for your call and your input on that so uh, one 2545 love to have you be part of this uh, conversation here on uh, abortion when does life begin etc uh, should there be some limits uh, on abortion in canada right now there are none so uh, be uh, feel free to join us here on this uh, alina emails saying, I've always believed abortion to be wrong. I believe God looks upon abortion as a horrific thing. I had a classmate who was pregnant at 14. Her family members wanted her to abort the infant. She chose to carry him to full term. She later adopted the child out to her parents who raised him. I've heard of medical students who can be, not, can be denied of their medical uh, license if they're sworn to be pro-life. This may be even even harder issue for future doctors now that euthanasia is legal in Canada. Lena, that's an excellent point. Um, I have heard some cases like that as well. I'm honestly trying to remember if that was in the States or in Canada. Uh, but exactly that did happen uh, where the person, you know, was training and uh, was being denied their right to become a, a medical doctor because they had a pro-life stance. Just craziness. Uh, but it brings up the whole issue of um, conscience rights uh, here in Canada. Uh, that is uh, being debated right now, for example, in Ontario. Uh, Marie Claire, uh, you're from Ontario, so um, mm -hmm. I just saw this here recently. Um, again, it was just uh, just really concerning to me to see in Ontario how the uh, yeah the College of Physicians and uh, um, and Surgeons basically have a policy that compel compel physicians who have conscientious objections uh, to assisted mm -hmm. suicide, abortion, euthanasia. They have to refer their patients to somebody who's willing to actually do this. Mm -hmm. So they call it an effective referral. Um, and it even requires physicians to perform the actual procedure if it's quote unquote an emergency situation. So totally defy your conscience, go against it, 
we're saying you have to or you're going to lose your medical license. Uh, I, I don't get that. I mean, in Canada, that shouldn't <laughs> be happening. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous. And it's not even, um, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't agree with forcing someone to do anything um, against, their, against conscience. their conscience because that's, I mean, it's the voice of God within you that mm -hmm. God's telling you to do something. But uh, it's not even the case that they're denying medical, like true medical care. They're not mm -hmm. denying someone a life-saving treatment. No. These are, these treatments bring death. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. just complete, re completely reversed. And it goes against um, the original Hippocratic Oath to mm -hmm. protect no the harm. patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do no harm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just totally upside down. And uh, unfortunately, this is going to continue unless uh, there's enough backlash from the everyday people, you and me, who actually do have power in mm -hmm. a democratic society to make a difference. Uh, again, I know there's a, a number of different petitions out there. Um, I'm not sure if you, do you guys have a connection with that as well uh, on your website. Yep. Uh, we have a, a tab, okay. <laughs> that, uh, the euthanasia tab. We have... We have had many petitions. Um, I'm not sure which one's circulating right now, but uh, it definitely, it's a, a medium to make your voice heard. Please mm -hmm. uh, sign, yeah. Absolutely. So let's get involved, right? CampaignLifeCoalition.com. Uh, another email, Lexi says, I'm not pro-abortion, but I would have trouble forcing a 12-year-old to keep her fetus in the case of a rape. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, it's a mm -hmm. heart-wrenching situation if you were to see something like that. It doesn't happen often. It is fairly uncommon, but it does happen. Um, so what would you respond? Um, how would you respond to that? Uh, I mean, well, first response would be to show compassion for, um, for the child who has been raped. Mm -hmm. Rape is a horrible thing. Uh, you can't deny that. You can't um, ignore that. Uh, that's probably going to haunt her uh, for the rest of her life um, and that he, she she needs to see someone um, she needs to be healed uh, but I would also s try to um, just point uh, back to the humanity of the child who had been conceived um, I mean we don't have uh, the death penalty for rapists in our country mm -hmm. why should that death penalty be put on the baby um, it's not mm -hmm. the baby's fault that he or she was mm -hmm. conceived in rape. Mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't discriminate people uh, depending on how they were conceived. And of course, um, help needs to be given to this, this young mother. Um, but uh, it, we should also not kill a life because of uh, this difficult... Uh, this, yeah, and, and that's uh, the difficult part. But I think people mm -hmm. stop short of thinking it through logically, right? Um, we're, we're, we kind of stop right there where we, we are caught by the emotions of a yeah, 12-year-old having yeah. to give birth to a child that is conceived by uh, an evil person who's forced himself upon her. Uh, very, very mm -hmm. challenging. However... Yeah, but I would go ahead. Sorry. I would also say I just listened to um, a testimony by this woman who was raped mm -hmm. as a teenager... And she did have an abortion um, shortly yeah. thereafter. Yeah. And she said uh, that having that abortion was like being raped again. Like mm -hmm. these were the very words that came out of her mouth. Yeah. Um, but she didn't, uh, the, the effects, the, the feeling didn't wear off. Mm -hmm. Like uh, because it was just, it was almost, she said it was like being raped by the doctors. Like abortion mm -hmm. does hurt women too. And why yeah. would you want to, quote, remedy um, that horrific incident yeah. of rape. Uh, I mean, as horrible as it incident. is, when you yeah. think it through logically, step by step, mm -hmm. this little 12-year-old is actually not just ending the life of the, you know, the child of the rapist, but it's her child as well, even though she wasn't mm -hmm. a willing participant. But that is her own flesh and blood. That's reality. And uh, have to go through that and live with that as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, and again, the fact that this child is totally innocent. It does involve another human being. And that's the point we, we have to consider. I mean, what is the unborn? That's the ultimate question, I guess, right? What is the unborn? Who is the unborn? It's maybe a better question mm -hmm. because it is not an it. It is from conception, the DNA, the genomes are there, the genetic recipe, if you will. This, this is a child with blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes. It's already determined. Boy or girl, already determined. Um, you know what? This little child has a destiny given to them by God. Are we going to take it away because of somebody's wrong? I don't think we have the right to do that. All right, uh, David, uh, 
It looks like another tough question here. I'd like to ask your guest why she feels it's wrong to abort a fetus that is early in development. If the heart isn't beating and if it doesn't have a conscious mind, I have trouble seeing this as a human. Okay, well, um, yeah, uh, how would you respond to that, Marie Claire? Uh, well, I would probably, uh, I want to address the consciousness first. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I'd use two separate arguments. Uh, consciousness, you, uh, when you go to sleep, you're not conscious. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, so, good point. Yeah, you can say, um, so to give someone uh, the right to life according to their consciousness, now it's really a, a subjective opinion. Um, you can come in and out of consciousness, or you can have the potential to be conscious. Um, what about uh, one-year-olds, uh, two-year-olds, children who haven't uh, developed hmm. uh, that consciousness per se? And then there's a whole spectrum of how conscious yep. are you? Yep. Um, what are you able to do? Are you able to do arithmetic or, or just read mm -hmm. or just speak a few words? Um, and so that's really a slippery slope because once you, you define yeah. uh, the right to live upon For your consciousness, sure. it just... Um, it gives, it allows other people to really uh, take okay. away rights according to their sure. opinion. What about the heart yeah. beating? Yeah. And the heart beating, of course, this is um, this is a difficult one. <laughs> uh, but I would say, the heart beating is just an instance. In uh, medically speaking, if you look at an embryology textbook, mm -hmm. um, it says life begins at conception because that's when the cells start to divide. That's when um, just your the, the DNA. Uh, necessary for that life to continue and develop is already there and so you just keep developing and mm -hmm. so the development of the heart doesn't necessarily mean that life hadn't already started developing yeah um, and mm -hmm. so you're really discriminating that uh, against that life because of their level of development mm -hmm. and then once again that puts other people at risk according to their level of development okay. um, yeah I am running out of time here. Uh, been a good conversation, Marie Claire. Really appreciate what you're doing sure. here. Uh, and I want to steer people to your website here to get involved uh, in the, the fight for life. Really, campaignlifecoalition.com. Uh, your March for Life is coming up May 11th. So again, mm -hmm. uh, as you point out, so many young people are coming, 25,000. So this is so encouraging. Be part of that. And I know a big part of what you do at Campaign Life Coalition is try to get people nominated. So... Um, I know you're encouraging people to go out and buy a, a membership, uh, and I do as well. I, I want to encourage people to actually, deadline is today, okay? Uh, if you uh, are somebody who uh, votes conservative, the federal conservative leadership campaign, get your membership today before midnight so you can vote hopefully a pro-life person into uh, power. And if you're, uh, you vote NDP, their deadline is August 17th for their federal election. And again, let's vote somebody in who's pro-life, okay? Uh, this is such important stuff. So God bless you guys at Campaign Life Coalition. Um, Thank you. Keep up the good fight. Thank you, Marie Claire. Thank you. Thank you for having me.